Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. You've likely heard of the term apocryphal before. It refers to ancient writings that are carefully guarded, often unknown to the general public. Recently, there has been an increased interest in some of these apocryphal books, which are not part of the common biblical canon but are found in certain Christian traditions. In this video, I will share information about these ancient writings with you. Please watch until the end, leave a like if you find it relevant, and share your opinions in the comments. The Mystery of the Hidden Apocryphal Books Let's begin by discussing the etymology and origin of the word apocryphal. The term has its roots in ancient Greek, where apo means away and cryptian means to hide or to conceal. In late Latin, apocryphal translates as secret. Therefore, we can understand that apocryphal basically means something hidden from those who are outside, that is, concealed or guarded. Apocryphal books weren't named arbitrarily. In fact, in the past, the Catholic Church kept these books under lock and key, preventing them from being read by all, with the intention of preserving the ancient knowledge contained within them. Apocryphal books, also known as deuterocanonical or pseudocanonical, are a collection of religious texts that were not included in the official canon of the major Abrahamic religions such as Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These books were written in different periods and in various regions of the world. Apocryphal books of the Old Testament include texts such as the Book of Tobit, the Book of Judith, the Book of Baruch, the Book of Wisdom, the Book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus, as well as additions to the books of Esther and Daniel. These are mainly found in Catholic versions of the Bible and are considered canonical by some Eastern and Orthodox Christian denominations. However, Protestant and Jewish churches traditionally do not consider them part of the biblical canon, viewing them as of historical or devotional value, but not inspired in the same way as other books of Scripture. The reason for the exclusion of these texts varies, but it is generally related to the lack of historical authenticity or the absence of recognition by religious leaders of the time. Apocryphal books of the New Testament are those written by early Christians but were not included in the canon of the New Testament accepted by most Christian churches. Among these books are the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Gospel of Judas, and the Gospel of Philip, among others. These texts often offer alternative perspectives on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ but were rejected as non-canonical by leaders of the early church, in part due to concerns about their historical and doctrinal authenticity. The fascinating and mysterious aspect of this subject is that many of these apocryphal books were actually part of the sacred canons of the Hebrew people, both before and during the time of Jesus. This connection to the ancient tradition of the people of Israel and the mysteries surrounding these texts add even more interest to this issue. Some Bible translations, such as the Septuagint, included several other books and additional chapters to the book of Daniel, addressing very interesting subjects. Besides the Septuagint, the Dead Sea Scrolls revealed that the collection of sacred books for the ancient Jews was significantly broader than our current canon of 66 books. While our canon contains 66 books, other canons include many more. The Catholic canon, the Ethiopian canon, among others, feature a variety of additional books. Many of these books were removed from the Holy Bible by the Catholic Church but are mentioned in the 66 books of the Bible. Interestingly, the Bible itself makes reference to these writings and even cites extensive passages from them. For instance, the Book of Jasher and the Book of Enoch are cited in the scriptures, as well as the Book of Jasher, which is mentioned more than once. These references highlight the diversity and richness of the sacred texts that were in circulation during biblical times. From this point onward, I will present a compilation of books mentioned in both the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Bible. These writings are part of the ancient canon of the ancient Hebrews, the ancient Israelites, and the early Christians. I will start with the Book of Jasher, also known as Jasher, mentioned in the Book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13, and in 2 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 18. Furthermore, it is referenced in 2 Timothy, 
chapter 3, verse 8. From the context of the book of Samuel, it is suggested to have been a collection of poetry from various books. Currently, many works claim to be this lost book, however, it is indeed missing. Many of these works are pseudo-epigraphical copies, where the authors simply title themselves as the Book of Jasher, though they are not, as the original book is lost, as far as we know. In addition to the Book of Jasher, we also have the Book of the Wars of the Lord, mentioned in Numbers, chapter 21, verse 14. This book is also cited in the Book of Jasher, translated by Moses Samuel and edited by J. H. Perry in 1887, in chapter 90, verse 48, as a collaborative record written by Moses, Joshua, and the children of Israel. Other writings of the Old Testament are the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah, mentioned in the Books of Kings, in 1 Kings, chapter 14, verses 19 and 29. These accounts narrate events during the reigns of the kings Jeroboam of Israel and Rehoboam of Judah, respectively. The Chronicles of the Kings of Israel are again mentioned in 1 Kings, chapter 16, verse 20, regarding King Zimri. Both books are referenced more than 30 times throughout 1 and 2 Kings. Also mentioned in the Holy Scriptures of the Old Testament is the Book of Nathan the Prophet, also called the Acts of Nathan the Prophet, or simply the History of the Prophet Nathan. It is referred to in 1 Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 29, and also in Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 29. In addition to these, we also have the Book of Gad the Prophet, or the Acts of Gad the Prophet, mentioned in 1 Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 29. We also have the Book of the Prophet Ahijah, also known as the Prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, possibly referenced in 1 Kings, chapter 14, verses 2 to 18, and mentioned in 2 Chronicles, chapter 9, verse 29. In the New Testament, we find the book of Enoch being referenced in the letter of Jude, which refers to the ancient writings of the book of Enoch, discussing fallen angels, demons, and ancient giants. This is perhaps the most famous apocryphal book known to date and is considered canonical by many Christians today, as well as by the canon of Ethiopian Christians. We also have the book of Jans and Jambers, the apocryphal book of Jans and Jambers, cited in 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 8, in which Jans and Jambers resisted Moses. Additionally, there is the epistle of Laodicea, mentioned in Colossians, chapter 4, verse 16. Other references include the two letters to the Corinthians, written by the Apostle Paul, mentioned in the Corinthians themselves, referenced in Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 9. There is also Paul's letter to the Ephesians, mentioned in Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 3, where he writes that he had already briefly written in the book of Matthew. In Matthew, there is a quotation of a prophecy made to Jesus, mentioning the thirty pieces of silver, allegedly prophesied by Jeremiah. However, upon reading the book of Jeremiah, we do not find such a prophecy. In reality, according to what we know, there was a book of Jeremiah that was recognized and circulated in the time of Jesus, but was not added to the Bible because it was considered a lost book or simply non-canonical. However, as one of its prophecies is cited, it is considered a canonical book. This was a list of just a few books of the Old Testament mentioned as being from the Bible and referenced by the books that make up our canon of 66 books. Besides them, there are several other books, such as Judith and Tobit, which are recognized in the Catholic canon and were considered valid for the ancient Israelites. In addition to the apocryphal books mentioned in the scriptures and which should be included in them, I remember a verse from the book of Revelation stating that plagues will fall upon those who remove or add anything to this book. The truth is that many books were removed from the holy scriptures, besides the apocryphal ones. It is also important to mention the pseudepigrapha, which are essentially false. The term pseudepigrapha derives from pseudo, which means false or deceitful in Greek, and epigraph, which refers to an inscription or writing. Therefore, they are false or falsely attributed books. The pseudepigraphal books were essentially works in which people pretended to be biblical characters, 
writing texts that were nothing but lies. Unfortunately, this occurred frequently in antiquity, and many of these works were considered false, not being recognized as authentic scriptures. We must be very careful with such texts, as they are nothing but deceptive fabrications. The discoveries of the Dead Sea Scrolls have provided us access to numerous ancient writings that were considered authentic and sacred to the ancient Essene Jews. Among these documents, copies of the ancient Book of Enoch were found, along with several other texts dated up to 300 years before Christ. These discoveries also allowed us to have an older version of our biblical canon, dating back about 2000 years. Comment below if you have heard about the Book of Jasher, the Book of Jubilees, and the Book of Enoch, or even about the Third Epistle to the Corinthians, and if there is any other book you would like to share with us. Thank you to all who have watched so far. Hope you enjoyed, God bless, see you soon.